And welcome back to the Spinner Rack, presented by Comics Remix, episode 59. As always, I'm your host, Big B. Brian Adams, joining me, my co host. Very disgruntled Sunday morning, Junior Ruiz. <laughs> I, I was going to sing a song and then I just lost it, so moving on. Something I wanted to discuss with you about that you stopped me from talking about before I hit the record button was I really am irritated and disappointed by these comic news websites. Is this going to be one of those episodes where I'm already disgruntled just because and then you're gonna get disgruntled because of the lack of whatever you're gonna tell me so it becomes a very disgruntled episode no it, it's gonna start a little disgruntled I'm, I'm gonna get the disgruntledness out of the way on your behalf i'm gonna get on yeah on my behalf all the anger i'm gonna decide and then we'll move on but i'm sick of these websites reporting news and then reporting it again and then reporting it again and then by the fourth or fifth time they reported in the week it's redacted None of it was correct. Now, why do you think they do that? I think there's the updates that they keep doing. It's I don't even know if it's necessarily updates or if they're just creating like clickbait. Okay. Like for one example, Channing Tatum as Gambit. Right. I okay. Saw that. Now we know from CDC, San Diego Comic Con. I don't know why I keep doing that. I really like something S-D-C-C. in my brain. Like it's just like screws it up. Mm-hmm. But anyway. We know from the con that he was there with Fox right. promoting Gambit. Now, this week, at the beginning of the week, they were saying, oh, you know, talks are falling through with Channing Tatum, and it looks like he's not going to be playing Gambit. Okay. And then it's like, well, it looks like he's still not going to be playing Gambit. Well, now it looks like they've gotten closer to actually signing him to play Gambit. Okay, why the hell do you have someone on your press tour promoting a movie if they're not even signed to be in it? Very true. Like, why is he out talking about playing Gambit if he's not, like, if he's not inked in blood the deal to play the character? You know, I get that they're trying to go star power. Mm-hmm. And, you know, okay, good decision. No, but yeah, it makes sense. Why not yeah. keep it in continuity and give it to the guy who played him in X Men Origins? Is it because X Men Origins took place so long ago? I think they're trying to attach a name to it because I don't think they feel like the character could stand on its own two feet. You know gotcha. what I mean? Yeah. I feel like if you if you attach Channing Tatum to Gambit, you get that built in Channing Tatum fan base. I honestly think this is Fox just trying to reach here only because they already know how bad their FF franchise is gonna be, mm-hmm. especially with the, the online fan backlash. Um, as far as the X Men franchise go, it was okay. Then I think Days of Future Past really, it was a great movie, but it screwed stuff up for them Mm continuity-wise, and the same with First Class, and now they merged the two, and it's just like, at least it took Marvel, what, 40, 50 years to give us convoluted continuity, where it's only taken them like four or five movies. Right, right. You know, so it's like kind of them backpedaling. I think what they should have done was consistently just put out X-Men movies and tell Mm -hmm. a story that way and let the fans decide what characters were popular, like how they did with Hugh Jackman, Mm -hmm. you know, and then give them spinoffs based off that. Now, the fans have been clamoring for the Deadpool movie. That is kind of separate because Deadpool is an X-Universe character, but he was never really X-Men. Right. You know, so if you want to do X-Men spinoffs, I figure you put them in the movie first, let let the fans decide, and then go from there. So, like, let's say you, you cast Channing Tatum as Gambit in an X-Men movie for two or three movies, and the fans love it, then you go ahead and say, you know what, the fans reacted positively to Tatum as right. Gambit, let's give them a spinoff movie. Don't give them, don't, first of all, don't waste your money, you know, because you're grasping the straws already with FF. You're, you're clinging on to the X-Men franchise. You're going to waste the money to go ahead and put out a movie that, first of all, nobody even asked for. No fans have been clamoring for a solo Gambit movie. Because we've only got, what, 10, 15 minutes of Gambit at all on film? Right. So, I would say Fox is already, you know, they're screwing the pooch on that They're, they're dropping the ball, right? Yeah, yeah. It's just yeah like, no, it, it would totally make sense to cameo the character in the movie. And then, if there's enough interest sparked from that, then maybe parlay it into, like, yeah, you're saying, you, you the build, Jackman. you build. And it doesn't, it just, it to me, it seems like they're just... Like, I I think I might have said this before in a previous show, that they're just grasping at straws and they're trying just to put something out just to hold on to the rights. Now that we're, yeah, well well now, since we're on the subject of Fox, do you, I've heard rumors, 
and I've seen stuff online where fans are starting to try to get other fans to boycott watching Fantastic Four so Fox can see how bad the movie bombs and is forced to give up the rights. Do, have you have you seen? I haven't. Yet? No. But hey, man, you know, I uh, sadly, I think there's enough people interested in that movie that it won't do god awful but it's not going to be pretty I mean just like I know they put out the first trailer and I was like all bashing on it and I'm like oh this Fantastic Four movie is going to be a total piece of trash and then I saw the first trailer and I was like oh it looks kind of interesting but honestly now the more trailers I see the less enthused I am about it I still want to know why Thing is not wearing pants yeah I don't know why they chose to not put Thing in pants uh, that's kind of stupid um, the kid that they cast is Reed Richards. I might have said this before, but he looks like an a-hole. And I know, I mean, I've never thought of Reed Richards as like an a-hole. Right, right. I mean, he comes off as like kind of a nerdy, self-absorbed, but not in like the Tony Stark way. Yeah, okay. More in like the consumed with science way. Yeah, you know like he I mean? just doesn't. Like less ego. Yeah. But this guy just looks like, you know, looks like an a-hole. No, I, 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 I... There's a, there's a lot that just visually is wrong with this movie, in my opinion. You know, like, I'm not, you know, I'm a big Doctor Doom fan, but I'm not right. at all excited. And it's like, how many times are you going to rehash that? Doctor Doom is the villain in the first movie. Doctor Doom was the villain in the second movie. Doctor Doom is the villain in this movie. Like, all right. So this is literally like a movie we could get and bootleg and then just watch it here in, in my living room and talk trash about it. And then we could do mystery like. mystery science theater. Yeah, and we could do like a five minute review of it. And just be like, Fantastic Four, suck. You know, and that's it. Pretty much. I'm like, honestly, as much vitriol as I've had towards the Suicide Squad. It looks a lot better than Fantastic Four. Yeah, Suicide Squad will be like a masterpiece. The Joker's appearance looks better than the Fantastic Four. I'll go that far and say that. Yeah, I I went there, man. The tattoos and the grill... And I will say that looks you, not even better. Maybe that's the wrong word. It looks more visually interesting. Okay. You, you actually want to find out. I I could why. understand the interest. Like, thing. does it have? Does the look have anything to do with the story? Right. You know what I'm saying? Or is it just something that hey, let's just throw together an ultimate version of Joker? There you go. But regardless, it still piques your interest more than the entire trailer of the Fantastic Four. Yeah. Yeah, it's just, and it's went beyond, like... Drops the mic. Yeah, it has went so far beyond, like, you know, because w- when they first revealed the casting, people were like, oh, for Michael B. Jordan, okay, Human okay, Torch, a black guy, oh. Right, oh, that yeah, that work. was the big thing. Now, first. it's moved so far beyond, like, that there is a black Human Torch that, like, I now feel sorry for that guy because no one's really going to get to see if he does a decent performance or not. Because I had gotten past that. I'm like, okay, I'm willing to check this out. But now, like, I actually am it looks looking horrible. forward to his uh, performance in Apollo. Yeah, in Creed? You know? Yeah, there you go. Yeah, Creed. That's what it's called. You said Apollo, and I got confused for a second. Yeah, no, no Apollo Creed. Creed, yeah. Yeah, no, that, that looks like a good movie. You know, and the guy might be a great actor in Fantastic Four. He might play that role great. But it's just like, there's just certain things. Yeah, it's something that's just going to get washed over because... Of the massive amount of suck that will be Fantastic Four. Do we can't, are, are we done with this? Can we move on? No, we can move on. Thank and you. Now, I've got another complaint about, uh, that I was talking to you a little bit about it before, Spider-Gwen and its creator, Robbie Rodriguez. And it came out early in the week that he said that they weren't allowed to create new characters because of movie rights. Right, and I was telling you I had read something yeah. similar to that. But now he's come out and said that that's not true. So wh- why, why... Why do we need this? Like, is there not enough going on in the industry that you can't solidly report on something inter- interesting instead of giving me the same, like, rehashed bullcrap well, that's had, just not true? I had read that as well, but I read that way before he said that. Because he just said that recently. Yeah, he, he just said it within the last couple of days. Yeah, no, I had read this a while back that there was, um, yeah, it came, it was part of the, um, if you remember, I don't remember if we did it on Spinner Rack or if we did it, or if I did it way back on uh, Comics Remix. That's how far it goes. When Marvel artists got 
a letter or an email or something stating for the new trading card set and for all further use of promotional artwork, they were supposed to leave off the Fantastic Four characters and anybody related to them. Yeah. You remember that? I do. Okay, in that instance, that's where the whole creating new characters for people like in the X-Men universe was forbidden. Only because, since Fox runs it, anybody that creates a new that new character for any franchise at Fox or at this well, we'll say Fox but I believe Sony was included in it as well um, then that studio now has exclusive rights to that character so if Bendis is writing all new X-Men right now mm-hmm. and he decides to introduce this really really cool character that fans love Gold Balls all, yeah Gold Balls but we'll it's like an actual balls. it's not an actual character is it really? it's an actual character Gold Balls yes he shoots giant gold balls, and he yells gold balls. It was just in the new issue. Uh, I'm not even lying. Of X-Men. Really? Yes. <laughs> that was awesome. You can't see me, but I just, like, horribly, horribly just face palm myself. Yeah. But anyway, okay, gold balls. Now Fox has the rights to use them if they want. You know, and Marvel does not want to give, continue to give... Fox creative. Uh, they don't want them playing with their gold balls. Yeah, pretty much. So, I could see where that comes from, but for him to come out and say that and then take it back doesn't make any sense, especially because now that Spider Man is a part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, I don't see Sony partnering up with Marvel to release a Spider Man movie and then say, "Oh, okay, that movie was successful. Thanks for the help. We're going back to what we were doing. We don't need you anymore." Marvel's gonna be like, "No, no, no, no. This is ours again." You know? Yeah. So, I, I don't see why this uh, Robbie Rodriguez would say that. There's got to be more to it. I feel like that guy just said stuff to, like, get his name out there. Well, didn't... was We, we talked about him previously because yeah. he opened his mouth about something, didn't he? It was about the, uh, the f- Manipal... No, it wasn't Manipal. Somebody did a variant of... The Spider... Um, spider Gwen, a sketch cover. Yeah, um, uh, Monera. Monera, that's it. That's right. No, it wasn't Monero that did the... Ver- so, no, someone he, did... Monero did the Spider-Woman, but, yeah, somebody, but somebody did... did like, Frank Cho. Frank Cho, that's Frank Cho it. did the Spider-Gwen in the Spider-Woman pose. That's what it was. And he wasn't happy about that. Because he said something about it was his daughter or something. That's like my kid, man. Okay. He's just an arrogant D-bag. But see, prior to Spider-Gwen, I've never heard of the guy. Yeah, neither did I. Neither have I. I've never heard anything of him before Spider-Gwen came along. Now, I know a lot of these creators nowadays are coming up from, you know, working on indie books. Because back in the day, it used to be you made your name with the big two, mm-hmm. and then when you were big enough, you split off and did your creator own work, and your, fan, your made fans followed you. Now it's the opposite. It's these guys are doing these independent books, they get a shot at the big time. And then when they get to the big time... Marvel and DC are hyping them up. Oh, we got so-and-so. We got so-and-so who worked on this book and that book. And you're like, well, I've never heard of that book. Only because nine times out of ten, your local shop probably didn't carry it. Right. Because you're getting a new book by somebody you've never heard of. And, you know, what are the odds? you got to fight for shelf space. Let me. Am I going to stock the newest issue of Avengers or am I stock the newest issue of Greg the Grocery Boy? Right. Hmm, which one do I think is going to sell? You know, and hell, Greg the Great Grocery Boy might be a great book, but you've never heard of it, you're not going to take a chance on it. Right. So, yeah, and so unless he's done something, and I'm pretty sure that's what it was, you know. Because I, I, I doubt Marvel and DC hire people just because, hey, you know, have you ever written anything? No, all right, come on, you're hired. Yeah, no, obviously not. You know, you've got to have some kind it's of... Not, it's know. like WWE hiring divas who have never wrestled. Like, yeah. <laughs> to totally. our earlier conversation. Absolutely. So... Absolutely. So, moving on from guys who talk too much and think too much of themselves. Um, sexuality seems to become, like, a... It's, it's been an issue in comics for a while now. Like, orient, sexual orientation? Yeah. Okay. Um, obviously, we've talked about them, them changing the sexuality of characters. Yeah. Um, I guess a new issue of Gem came out, and one of the like misfits... Like, Gem and the Holograms? Like, Gem and the Holograms. And one of the misfits, I believe, is uh, gay. Okay. And is in a relationship with, and there's been all kinds of fan backlash about it, and people are all angry because you know kids are reading that, and it's just like, is is there a line where this just needs to stop? Does is does sexuality play an important role in comic books? 
and should it? You know, it's interesting you bring that up because I was reading an article a couple days ago and I was actually talking to my girl about this yesterday. Um, not comic related, but having to do with the actual question that you just brought up. Um, over, well, I guess we can talk about it now since I just brought it up, but it's wrestling related. They revealed earlier this week that back in 2003, whenever Brock Lesnar made his debut, mm-hmm. the original plans were for Brock Lesnar to be exactly the way he is now, you know, big dominant badass, except his character was going to be gay. What they were going to do was have him just be dominant, just crush everybody, the exact Brock that you know now. The only thing is he would grab a mic and be like, oh, and I'm gay. Because it was the hopes that they they get, for one, would get the gay community to support them and be like, yeah, we actually have a badass and not portray it as a stereotypical gay character like the way they did Rico or Billy and Chuck or anything like that. Like, you know. Or Dalton Castle. Who? Dalton Castle. Oh, the guy from Ring of Honor. Oh, dude, that guy's awesome. But you see what I mean? Like, yeah. you think gay, you think the stereotypical. Mm-hmm. You've never had a gay character on wrestling, <clears throat> excuse me, where they were as dominant and it's just like, oh, and the guy's gay, you know? But at the same time, it's like, who cares? What, and this translates back to the gem question. What does the character's sexual orientation have to do with the character? Like, would it have, is, is it drastically changing them? Like, going back to Brock, if they would have kept him the exact same way and just have his character come out and say he was gay, would that make him any less of an ass kicker? I wouldn't think so. You know, like, what, what would him having come out and be like, oh, I'm gay, not ring the bell? What would that have changed? Would it have changed anything storyline-wise? Probably not, if they wanted to keep it that way. Mm-hmm. So, going back, what does that have to do with Jem and the Hologram? First of all, the only one you ever know is Jem. Can you name the holograms? The, the, me personally, no. Yeah. No, I neither know. can I. So, what does it matter? Why do we have to make one of the holograms gay? Well, Who it's, cares? it's not even one of, it's one of the misfits. Oh, okay, okay, Who was okay. the competing, yeah, exactly. the bad girl band. Exactly. That's even And like I only retained this knowledge because of reading an article, and I kind of remember the cartoon when I was a kid. But that's the funny thing, is people are coming out, and they're like, oh, you know, I'm not going to buy this book for my daughter now. Like, okay, first of all, this book isn't, I don't think this book is geared towards kids to begin with. Okay. I feel like it's another one of those nostalgia pieces. Right. Like, G.I. Joe, is G.I. Joe a book for kids? Probably not really. They're probably going more after me and you right you know people that pre-built fan base um it's just it's ridiculous man i i first of all it's not like they're having sex it was a kiss it's you know get it it's like people have this fear that little kids are going to see a woman kissing a woman or a man kissing the man and it's going to make them gay and i just don't think that's the case i think I mean, man, it's just funny how, how much this week's spinner rack and this week's lockup kind of intertwine because a lot of the subjects are very similar. So I'm going to say now, I've also said on lockup, this society that we live in currently is very, very delicate. For lack of a better word, they're pussies. I agree. It's I'm not like, going to beat that either. No, I don't want you to. Okay, yeah. They're too sensitive. No, absolutely. It's, I mean... They're soft. Swoofed. Yeah, and I ain't even talking about that. Like, right. I'm no, talking no, I, I agree. soft. I agree. They're, they're, you know, dollar store brand toilet yeah. paper with one drop. You're, you know, anyway. Yeah. Um, but no, this is the society we've lived in. In the last, I would say, five to ten years, this society has been so sensitive with any and everything under the sun that maybe 20 years ago... You can joke and goof about, and nobody batted an eye. Look at uh, Gem and the Holograms, the original cartoon. I got my daughter watching it from time to time. There was an episode we were watching where Gem was trying to stop one of the record producers, and he backhands her. Dude, he backhanded her. But back then, it was like, oh, yeah, he, he's a jerk. He swatted her out of the way. Right. He's going to get his. Nowadays, you can't, no, you can't even mention something like that in the cartoon. The FCC is on you. Parents are, scre- are screaming how how bad it is. Right. It, it's gonna give turn kids into serial killers. I mean, you name it. You know, like it's oh man, this is gonna like stop being a comic book podcast in a minute here. But it 
So then I, I take it you have heard even... that there was talk <laughs> about Hercules being gay. Because Hercules, Marvel character? Hercules is getting a new Marvel book. See, why would they do that though? He was like, he was one of the more masculine characters. Here's my beef with this. Shit. Why the hell are they constantly turning characters gay as opposed to just creating new characters? Create the new character, let him be gay from the start. Why do you have to change it? Iceman. The yeah, no, that's, version. yeah. Like, the, the, the younger, all new X Men version. Yeah. yeah, no, it doesn't. It, and you know what? It, it, it hasn't played into the story except for a weird conversation about, like, I mean. Society that was, a, that was such an inappropriate joke there I was about to make. So. Society has obviously embraced the concept of homosexual relationships. Right. Okay? It is now legal in the United States of America for people of the same sex to be married. Why do they, like, I don't, I just don't, I don't get it, man. Like, it's like they have to go out of their way to show you, hey, hey, see, we support it, we support it, hey, hey. It's like, it just let it be. You know, don't go out of your way to be like, oh, look, this guy's gay. Or, oh, look, that guy's, are you, hey, look, Superman's straight. Hey, look, Batman's straight. So what? Batman and Tony Stark are billionaires that bang plenty of chicks. Does that factor into the stories at all? No. So what do I care that Iceman wants to go play with some popsicles? What do I care that they're going to turn, uh, that, that so-and-so is gay or one of the misfits is gay? Who cares? I'm reading the story because of the character. I'm reading the story because I'm curious to where it goes. I don't care about their sexual orientation. I don't yeah, think no, that doesn't... needs to be a focus. When they turned Alan Scott gay for the New 52, it was a big deal. Oh my God, a Green Lantern is gay. A Green Lantern is gay. So what? The only positive, honestly, that, that I could say that came out of that whole thing was that actually, the, when um, if I remember reading the story correctly, when he got his ring... And the train that he was on crashed and his, his fiance died. That was motivation for him to go off and be this hero that mm -hmm. apparently he was meant to be. Cool. I get it. But the same thing could have been done if his fiance was a woman. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It, it, that's, that's one of those things where it was an insignificant change that really overall didn't play into who the character is. Right. It, it, it's, I mean, it didn't bother me. I was a big fan of Earth 2. I still read the Earth 2 book now. Right. It's, no, it didn't bother it didn't, me, but it it's like... Anything. They glor... I think that's the word. They glorify these things for no reason. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that gay and lesbian characters shouldn't be on par with, you know, the, char the straight characters we've known for years. That's all well and lovely. But I feel it's just like you're, you're... And pandering is not the right word here, but why constantly throw like, hey, look, we like gays. We like lesbians. Hey, let's let, let's let's spotlight the fact that we're doing this. Like, why? I think it is kind of pandering. You know, it's because they're trying to bring in like they're they're trying to get a group of people that probably already buys comic books like to get. Let's oh look, we have more. You know, there's more Mexicans and more gays and more blacks. And, right, right. You know, it's just it's obviously we live in a diverse society. And comic books hasn't really reflected that, but the way they're choosing to do that reflection by shoehorning characters that have been around for 50, 60 years or longer and making them something that they're not, it just doesn't work. Now, where it does work is in the case of Miles Morales. You've taken the idea of a character and made it something complete. You know what I mean? You've created See, yeah, something. Yeah, but that, that's rare. That's very rare. The only other character I can think of that's been around for a long time that... It, that's gay and really didn't bother me because we already knew he was gay for such a long time was North Star. Right. From Alpha Flight. Or, excuse me, X-Men, Alpha Flight. I'm dating myself here. Yeah, whatever. It's, but it's... You, you get what I'm saying? Like, I honestly think, man, if you're going to go that route, introduce new characters. But then, at the same time, it can be said, oh, well, you're just introducing new characters so you can have a gay character in there. Does it matter if that yeah. character is written successfully? It's See, that's the problem, man. It's like, People clamor for something and then you give it to them and then they're like, "Oh, you're just doing it to appease." Right. It's like there's no, there's no winning, man, with people today. Right. And I honestly, in closing with this, because I'm getting like really ir irritated talking about it now. <laughs> um, I honestly think whether the character is gay or straight should not matter. It shouldn't even be mentioned storyline wise unless it has to do with the story. Right. 
Like, don't even bring it up. Why bring it up? You know? I'm done. I don't know, man. There's been situations where it's been fine. There's been situations where it's just like, okay, what's with this? And, like, I just read the Hercules thing. And they're not even going to... He's not even going to be gay. He's going to be straight. So, why... Why was there even the conversation? His book didn't sell when it was when he was a straight man. I picked up, I think, the nine issues, but it didn't sell really when he was straight. Do they think it's gonna sell when he's gay? But he's not. But he's not gonna be gay. Right, right, right. But I'm saying, like, had they decided to go that route, like they even the article brings up about how they, you know, what's whoa, Hercules get a book? What's the sexuality gonna be? And it was just like, is this like what it's come to today? Apparently. Like, instead of having quality stories and actually having something to talk about, you just have to be like these what ifs and, you know, because they talk about how, like, uh, I mean, it was it was really weird and I could probably waste, like, 20 more minutes talking about it, but they went into the fact that he was, like, Greek and that Greeks didn't really identify people as homosexuals back then, like, men would have relationships with men and women, it wasn't a big deal, but then people talked about how, you know, in mythology he had kids and a wife, and it's just... Uh, you know, create new characters, man. Create new characters. You know, <sighs> let's not shoehorn. Saying this, I, I I don't know if I'm gonna shoot myself in the foot for saying this or not. Maybe it just might be because I've been away from really being involved in comics for the last six months, six seven months. What are we in August? Eight months. Um, I think the comic industry. It's just, it, the industry itself is just suffering. You know, like, I, it just needs a break. My, this is the last thing I'm going to say about on sexuality and comics. People seem to be highly concerned about kids reading comics. And the funny thing is, is like I said before with Jevin Holograms, I don't really think that's aimed at kids. And if you go into a comic book store, there is a kid section of comics. Right. And at that point, do you need, to, does sexuality need to be a part of, a child's world I don't think so correct I don't think so because I don't think that's something that a kid's really concerned about at seven eight nine years old you know what I mean right well let it go for later you know but whatever that's just my two cents you know Batwoman great character she's gay I don't care she's a good character you know why that one stands out because she, a she, like you said she's a good character she was written very well mm-hmm. the art was great and it was a character that was introduced as a lesbian pretty early on you know and it played part of it was part of her it was part of her story you know it wasn't hey we've got this character around for two or three years oh yeah by the way she's gay right. let's just make her gay out of the blue it's no. like oh here's the raw high kid he's gay now right because we saw how well that went yeah no with her it worked because they they initially pitched it where she was gay. Right. You know, and people, okay, yeah, this is a, a new character and she's gay. As opposed to, Batman's been straight for 75 years. Tomorrow, starting tomorrow, he turns gay. Yeah. You know, you can't do that. Yeah, no, it just, it doesn't, it's, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. Now, something, moving on, something I do wonder if it's going to work. Can Iron Man support a second title? No. Okay. You don't think so? No. I don't think so either. How many times has his his single title been stopped? canceled? Yeah, yeah, enough. You know, he's one of those characters that has spurts of good stories. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't think he has. He's one of those characters. I don't care. I mean, yeah, he may have spearheaded the Marvel Cinematic U, but in comic form, no. Especially, you. How's he going to support a second title when he's probably in how many other books? Yeah. You know, it's oversaturation. Don't do it. No, it's it's this ain't the nineties anymore where Spider Man can have five titles and get away with it. Right. At least back then they made sense. You know, same well with the X Men. The X Men I've always understood to have plenty of titles because there's so many mutants. Right. But I hated it when you had Wolverine on three teams. Right. Like Storm like is Storm on the Uncanny X Men? Is she in the regular X Men? What you know, what's going on? See I liked it when they had X Men and then Uncanny X Men and then when they split it up at 281 and the Uncanny X-Men was the gold team. And the blue, yeah, the, the blue and the gold team. Yeah. That was awesome. That was a great because idea. Because then you knew, okay, this book is for this team, this book is for this team. And if they crossed over, it was brief. You know, like, oh, Cyclops is on the gold. No, he was on the blue team, but you've seen him in Uncanny because Gene was on the gold team and there was a reason they were there. And then he went, oh, okay, I've got to go on a mission. And he left. 
and then right. you read about the mission in Unca- in in X Men. It's not like that anymore, you know. And then in one book, Storm has a mohawk. In the other book, she's got long hair, and you're like, man, there's just no continuity. Like, I honestly think going back to what we were saying, the the comics industry itself, specifically the big two, need a I don't even want to say reset, but they need a pause. I know obviously because it's their bread and butter, it's gonna hurt them. But I believe if if it was possible in a in a in a perfect world, Marvel and DC should cease publishing publishing comic books for a year. Don't publish anything. Recharge your batteries, and then come back and tell some fresh stories again. But then another thing: these characters have been around for so long now. At what point does this start to get mucked up in terms of continuity? Okay. You know, like. Starting in the 60s, you're still building the character, you're building the character. In the 90s, you're still building the character. But I think at the, the late 90s, early 2000s, is when you pretty much did everything you could do. And now you start to rehash old ideas in a new way. And now okay, look, so, look at the mess it's gotten them into. So speaking of continuity, I'm going to close with this. Dan DiDio came out this week and said that the DC will not reboot again. For like the next year or so. That's what I said. I said, give him ten years; it'll happen sometime in the next decade. To do my enemy in charge again, exactly. But it'll exactly. happen. <laughs> it's uh, it's it's just it's ridiculous, you know. It's it seems to me that they find something that works, and then for some reason they don't feel like it works, and they tear it down, and they decide to like like Superman. Like I talked about how pre New Fifty Two, I thought they were going in a good direction with Superman. Superman had a lot of good arcs under Jeff Johns. Yeah. Come New 52, Superman hasn't had any good arcs. Surprisingly, I am enjoying Superbro, as I've taken a call on him. Um, it's interesting, you know, they've, they've, uh, it's, it's a new take on the character, but it's really not the problem with the character. People feel like that Superman has too much power. It's just mishandled. Like, people just don't know how to write him anymore. And I think that's like the change of society. Society's become too soft to handle Superman. I agree. It just doesn't know what to do with him. I agree. And then Batman's so freaking convoluted. It's just... A, that would be a great idea, man, if they just... Yeah, but that would never happen. My, my thing is, why can't you... Like, I, I... See, continuity is such a big thing to me. Uh, organization, you know, like, I have OCD and stuff. You see how I keep my toy totes? Mm-hmm. It's just being organized. So why not have the the Superman, the Batman, the Iron Man, the Captain America, all these characters that we've been reading about from the 70s, the 80s, and 90s, treat their storylines as if they were happening on a day-to-day basis. You know, when you go back and you tell a story that happened 20 years ago, and that story's going to change something, that's when it gets convoluted. Right. No, don't do that. Keep it this way. And if you want to tell an alternate story, put it in a miniseries, or that's when you make a multiverse. So I give DC credit on the multiverse. I think they don't. I think they didn't realize what they had in the multiverse until it was too late. And I don't know if they even still realize it. I think it's one of those things where it's just like, okay, the Superman from the '90s, continue that 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 vibe, that trend, go with it. You want to tell super bro stories? Okay, that's cool. Put it in a, on another planet, you know, or another one of the multiverse worlds right. or whatever. You can tell all these stories, but just make sure that you don't intersect, like, they intercross. Once they intertwine because of a stupid crossover or whatever, that's when it's just like, you know what? Yeah. Nah. I, you know, I never thought that I would say this. I mean, I, I thought, well, I can't, I can't say that. But when I was younger, a couple of years back, I would sit and, like, you know, like, would there be a day that I ever get tired of comics? Because there's always been, over the years, you know, 23, 24 years I've been collecting comics. It's always been collect comics for like five, six years straight and just get burned out, walk away, mm-hmm. come back a year or two later, catch up, read everything, you know, buy everything I missed out in those two years, go again, you know, back and forth. But this last time, I'm not missing it and I have no desire to go back. I mean, I still buy a few titles, but I buy them because those are the titles that don't give me a headache. Well, it's become, it's become like, and I, I've told uh, Melissa this before, for me, as a fan, it's become daunting to try and keep up with everything because I've gotten to the point where I just don't care as much. Right, yeah. And honestly, like, I, well, you know, like, out of the little bit that I happen to read, like, I don't really go to the comic book store that much anymore. And if I did start collecting 
as I was before, where I'm actually going and buying single issue, issues, because collected editions are kind of the way to go for me nowadays, but I still do read singles digital. Um, if I was going to go back into the store and start buying comics and collecting again, I don't think it would be anything from the big two. I think it would be all independent stuff. Because that's honestly the only thing I really look forward to at all. Anymore. I think because it hasn't had the chance to get convoluted with continuity. Yeah. You know, all that stuff. That's the way to go. It's like, you know, in closing, Invincible is doing its first relaunch. Is it really? Yeah. Why? Um, because if you haven't been reading Invincible, they have really pushed that story to a point to where it's like, what can we do now? Okay. It's gotten so far. And like, even as a reader, like, they have now hit a point to where, like, there's a couple story threads to tie up. And then, man, he could just be done with that. So but why not? There, th- that's what I don't understand. Probably because it sells well. And Kirkman's got an ego. So what's to relaunch? So I think, from what I'm understanding, and there hasn't really been any news on it, and obviously when it comes, I will talk about it here. Because I have been following that book since the beginning. It seems to me that they're going to hit the reset button. And it's going to all go back to when he got powers. But the question to me is, is I think he's going to remember everything that happened. Hmm. See, that was a run that right around issue 100, I was like, you know what, I remember because I had stopped buying it for a while. I was like, wait a minute, I had these. And I went back, I was only missing issue 54. And I was like, that's it? So I went and filled the one gap. So I had like one through like 105, 106 complete single issue format that's a, that's that's something I started buying in trade I never bought the single issues and I've kept up with it and dude excellent I started reading them when I was over there at the shop and I was reading them in trades and then I would stop because I was trying to catch up I was on fables as well because fables was a great book that I used to really be into and I started reading those trades I started re- catching up on Walking Dead then we started doing other stuff and I just fell behind it's hard. Walking Dead's a book that got kind of stale. And then they did like a, a time there. jump. Yeah. From the end of Negan to current. Yeah. And it's gotten slightly Weird. interesting, you know. Yeah. It's They've managed to, I don't know how far behind you are on your Walking Dead. Last I read was issue, let me think. One. Doo, doo, yeah, right. Doo, doo. January, so... Oh, so you're only like like seven issues behind or so. Yeah, I'm trying to remember exactly what it was. I remember Carl wanting to move. To the hilltop. Yeah, to get the job. To and become then, an uh, apprentice. In, in they had just brought in that new group of people. Mm-hmm. And they were doing interviews with him. And they're like, well, why should we trust? You know, like they're, the, these new people are looking at these people, uh, at, you know, the characters we know. And it's, well, why should we trust you? Right. You know, and I think the last issue I remember reading was one of them finding Negan downstairs yeah. in the jail cell. So that's kind of where I left Dude, out. who's become a really interesting character now that he's just not out in the world effing stuff up? It's really kind of, uh, I don't know, man. That's a book I thought was on its last legs, and it's, it's still, it's hanging in there. Got some life. Ha, no pun intended. Yeah. But I mean, yeah, it's, everything's getting kind of stale, and a reset button or a pause, or maybe just a break would be a good idea. But some of it's actually pretty good. Like, some of the things that I have bashed here on the show I have had to come back and be like I was wrong but that's just my opinion I mean I'm sure there's people out there that hate Jim Gordon as Batman right it's kind of interesting and he actually has a Batman suit no cape but he's got a cowl and it looks interesting and Bruce Wayne's actually just in the last issue Bruce Wayne showed up whatever so it's kind of you know you gotta do something different every once in a while with that character been around for 75 years. Was there a time jump between the end of the Joker storyline and then Jim Gordon as Batman? I I would imagine there Six months, maybe. Okay. Maybe a year. See, that's what I'm saying. Why jump ahead that far? And then now, in a year or so, you're going to screw up continuity again because you're going to go back and tell the story of what happened to that missing (laughs) year, and it's going to screw everything up, and you're like, oh. See, I would have just started the very next day. Like, okay, so how did... Well, that's you know, like, uh, is it... So this is what I'm like. People, this is one of the things, I'm going to close with this. It's one of the things that really irritates me about fanboys is, oh, you know, 
they're ripping off so and so. Like, okay, everyone rips off each other, all right? Yeah, no idea is original. No idea is original. DC has done it before Marvel did it, and then DC will do it again, and then Marvel will do it again. Marvel is doing what I like to call their one year later, except it's going to be, I think, eight months. Yeah. So once Secret Wars ends and the new, all different, all new, all different Marvel now starts, Jesus, that's going to get. Can we just get the big M, the Marvel M back that used to be in the corner? Right. In, uh, of the comic cover with Marvel on the top and then it's a big M and comics written in yeah. it. Yeah. Can we just get that back? Yeah, no. Yeah, that's we can get that back with all new, all different. Yeah, no, that's when things were. And some now. <laughs> You know, and people want to rag on me because I was a fan and I actually could keep up with the original, the the '90s Clone Saga. Like, man, get out of here! That's 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 Skittles compared to the continuity crap that's going on now. Seriously, like I follow that. Well, Ben Riley's the real Spider-Man. No, he's not the real Spider-Man. Okay, no, he's like no, I, not. you know, I've come on the show before and I've said how, oh man, Secret Wars is, dude. I'm like so burned out on Secret Wars right now. Really, so burned out. That was fast. Like it's, it's I'm just, over. I'm, t- I'm tired of it. Wow. Like I'm tired of like the twenty, mil- the twenty I, I different versions of X Men. I think it's the tie-ins. You know, it's, every time I turn around, I see the new the Age of Apocalypse and this. Yeah, and, it's, that, and it's a cycle. So what is, is this? Is explain to me because you, I'm sure you've read some of them. What is the purpose of these tie? Like Age of Apocalypse, for example, and I know they did Extinction Agenda. Was it retelling the story? No. Is it? Is it? A, what is it? It's taking like elements of the story. And doing different things with them. Some of them it's so a like continuation of. Yeah, kind of. Or else worlds, you know? It's pretty much like, hey, look, we've created a world of else worlds and what ifs, kind of. Like there's a new So basically I should be okay that I'm not spending money. Oh yeah, totally. You're totally it's it's seriously people want people won't want to admit this, especially not Marvel fanboys, but this is just as much of a hot mess as Convergence was. You know, it's funny. Except the main book is better. Because I'm sitting here, as we're discussing this, thinking about all the mo- or all the weeks, every week. How, even with my steep discount, I was sitting there. Dee, dee, dee. Oh, my total for books this week is 150 Next week, it's 150 Next week, it's 130 Next week, it's 220 Like, do you know how many action figures I could have bought with all that stuff? And I don't have to worry about continuity with action figures. Totally not. You know? And, and now all those are books are sitting in the storage, and I'm like, what am I going to do with them? Like, I don't know if I want to get rid of them yet. You know, and it's just like, well, they're there. And like I said, stated before, these are characters whose stories are probably never going to end. You know, they're going to be around, like Robin Hood and, 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 and just characters like Tom and Jerry and Bugs Bunny. These characters are going to be around forever. Yeah. You know, there's not going to be, especially somebody like me being a completist, where when you look at action figures, I have to have the whole set because we all know that the set we're collecting will eventually end. Yeah, there will be no end to this. Yeah, you'll always get a new relaunch, a new relaunch. So what is going back to what Dan DeDio said, what, am I supposed to believe that in the next 25 years, we're going to get 25 years straight numbering of Batman comics? Yeah, that's not going to happen. It's not. because I'm still waiting for them to go back. Like, when are we going to hit the tech to a, a thousand so they hit that reset button and they put out, oh, it's the thousandth issue of Detective. Yeah, it'll you know? happen. But they won't announce it until it's almost there. Yeah. I mean, how would you? How could you not do that? Well, they, yeah, because they're doing it with Uncanny Six Hundred. Where did that come from? Well, see, Marvel's always been doing that, though. Marvel never yeah. stated that they would never go back and renumber. Yeah, no. And they even did that dual numbering for a that while, cool. which was really strange. That was cool, though. But for DC to sit there and say they won't relaunch Action Comics and they won't relaunch uh, Detective, yeah, I don't think so. Yeah, give it time; it'll happen when that when they need the money. Can we be done with this now? We're this... done. It's over. This has been a, this has been a frustrating episode of the Spin Rack for my co-host Junior. He's just angry. Hey man, every once in a while I can't be all happy. We gotta get some anger out. You know, like I, going, I, that's why you know, like you said, indies. But there's certain books that I won't stop buying. You know, I love my Turtles books. I don't have to worry about. Man, Turtles really. has been solid though. Yeah. Like since Turtles has been like even the tie-ins have been good, and the things they're doing with the characters are interesting. I like that the tie-ins actually tie in. Yeah. It's not just because it has to It's be not just, oh my God, I'm going to get a friggin' aneurysm trying to figure out where this fits in. It not just even fits. That. It's not that. It's not like, okay, let's say Turtles was doing Battle World. You know, oh, now we're going to tell the story of April and Casey and just name it Battle World. Right. No, it actually ties in, you know. Like when they did the um, the, the micro series, the one-shots, 
and you were like, oh, it's just a solo story starting that character. But all those sto- solo stories tied tied, into ended the main up book. tying yeah. into the main book. Yeah, exactly. And you'd get a little editor's note. Yeah. Oh, this took place in Micro Donatello. Yeah. yeah. Like when, exactly. That's what I was thinking with the Donatello yeah. when he met Harold. You know, oh, I, lo- I love the computer name Does Machines 84. That was so great. But I mean, that it's, tied in because he met Harold. Yeah, and that's, and, and you now, can appreciate that stuff. Harold is in the main book, mm-hmm. he's one of the main characters. Um, he's helping Donnie out with the metalhead body. He designed the nobody suit that Angel now uses. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just like, it's not convoluted at all. No, it's it's not. It's not at all. You know, I, I still read that. Um, if I can, if I had the cat, the, the disposable income to walk into a store and buy, catch up on the couple issues I missed of Walking Dead, I'd do that. You know, um, Spider Man, I'm always gonna read. You know, just because I can follow it. Mm-hmm. I just, you know, that's just that. It's Spider Man. It's kind of like Batman. That's why I still read Batman, even though it's not Bruce Wayne. It's Batman. I still read it. You know, I've been reading it for. 30 years, why am I going to stop See, now? See, the same way, but for some reason I can drop Batman before I can drop Spider-Man. I think yeah, because obviously. Spider-Man is just one person and he doesn't have a spider family. I mean, now you've got... Give Silk it time. S- Give it time. Well, I mean, you got Silk and Spider-Gwen and all that stuff, but it, those are, you know, whatever. They don't really tie into Spider-Man, whereas Robin and Nightwing and Batgirl and... and uh, oh. Let's move on. <laughs> dying here. Well, that's it for episode 59 of the Spin Rack. As always, you can check out everything we do at Facebook, uh, Twitter, Comics Remix, Spin a Rack. Uh, you can email us at Brian at Comics Remix, Junior Comics Remix. Alex at Comics Remix, check out Alex's toy reviews. I'm not sure what he did this week. I haven't really been on the internet too Alex much. Alex hasn't done anything in the last couple weeks because congratulations. Oh, uh, he's to a he, homeowner. He's a congratulations, homeowner Alex. He's been. Uh, taking care of that so he's had a few weeks to get that Hope hey man life you know we all have lives it's not like this is our job we do this because we love it we hope you love it too because damn it if you don't love it why are we doing it i guess because we like to hear the sound of our own voices i don't have to come over here to do that that's true what are you gonna call me more i never answer the phone yeah i was just gonna say you never <laughs> answer the phone uh anything you need to add there nothing i want to add okay well then we'll see you next week's peeps Peace.